In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. He said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Brother Spell, and praise the Lord, everyone. It is great to be in Baton Rouge tonight. And it's great to be in this building, uh, in this place of worship. My first time to be in this building. I've been um, in the camp meeting before and preached one night when you were uh, having camp meeting the other place. Uh, I can see it in my mind, but I don't know how far it is from here, but about five miles. It was a great place and great service, and I enjoyed that so much. But it's great to be with you tonight. Good to be with Bishop Spell, whom I have loved and honored admired and respected for many, many years, a great man of God, and uh, he has done quite a work in um, Baton Rouge, and uh, I think we all recognize and admire that and praise the Lord for the work he's done, and then Brother Tony Spell, who's now the pastor, I'm telling you, this is a young man, but he is evermore a great preacher. Praise God. That's right. <clears throat> He came to our, our church back in March and preached, and, and it was absolutely amazing, amazing, the preaching that he did, and it was, it was truly awesome. And I am glad to be with him and uh, be in this church. Thank you for the invitation to come tonight and be with you. And Brother Tim Spell has been my longtime friend. He has come to Durham for 25 consecutive years, usually twice a year. He comes and uh, preaches and sings and shouts and leads the choir and does anything he wants to. Great preacher, great uh, musician and singer. So uh, it's great to be with all of you tonight and then see all the great host of ministers that are here and your wives and families and all the great saints of God. It's great to be with you. The Lord's a great God, isn't he? How many appreciate his greatness? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Well, it's camp meeting. It's time to have revival. In. Praise God. Let's all worship the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 And tomorrow night you're going to hear some good preaching. So don't, uh, don't let tonight scare you off. You'll hear some good preaching tomorrow night. Brother Ben Weeks is a great preacher. Enjoyed his wife singing. I love Brother Ben Weeks, his family. And I know you'll be blessed by his preaching tomorrow night. And Brother Spell, your pastor on the weekend. Man, I'm telling you, you got some good things lined up. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. I said, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. 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 I was thinking when I saw this beautiful building today and all the 14 acres and all the wonderful properties here and the blessings of God in this church, it's all built not only, and Brother Spell would tell you, it's, it's the hand of God, it's the mercy of God, it's the goodness of God. God uses people, I know that. God uses men. And it takes unity, it takes working together, it takes everybody pulling together. Amen. We've all probably been in a church a time or two where some are pulling one way and some the other way. You don't get much done that way. When everybody's pulling the same direction, it makes a difference. Amen. I was reading here a while back about a man that was lost while he was driving through the country. And he tried to read his map. And while he was trying to read his map, he drove off the road and got in the ditch. He wasn't hurt, but uh, he was stuck in the, in the mud. So he went to a nearby house, and there was an old farmer there, and he said, I wonder if you could uh, get me out of the ditch. And he said, well, follow me. And he went around, and he showed him an old 
old mule standing in the field, an old haggardly mule that looked like he couldn't do anything. He said, this mule's name is Warwick. And he said, Warwick can pull you out of the ditch. And he thought, man, if this is the only hope I got, I'm in trouble. Here's an old skinny mule. And there's no way that he's, he said, come on. He said, we'll go. So he took him out there to his car. And uh, the farmer hits the mule to the car. And with, when, with a snap of the reins, he started shouting. The old farmer did. He said, pull, Fred. Pull, Jack. Pull, Ted. Pull, Warwick. And by the time he called Warwick's name, that mule, that old skinny mule, just pulled that car right out of the ditch. And the, and the Traveler was amazed. He said, man, I've never seen nothing like it. It's shocking. I can't believe it. He said, uh, but one question. Why did you call all of these other names before you call Warwick? And the farmer grinned and he said, well, the fact is, stranger, that old Warwick is totally blind. He can't see a thing. But as long as he believes he's a part of the team, he don't mind pulling. <laughs> Praise God. And I believe it's time for the church to pull. I said it's time for the church to pull together tonight. Hallelujah. Together we can have victory. Together we can have revival. Together we can have a move of God. Together we can have great things happen in the church. Together. Somebody shout together. Somebody shout together. Praise God. It takes togetherness to build this. And, and to see this great work here is... Truly remarkable, and I'm blessed to be here tonight. I'm honored to be here. Thank you for the invitation to come. And if you've got a Bible with you, would you please turn tonight to the uh, book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 10. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 10. Brother Jerry Cox is my friend. Brother Aaron and his wife. I'm glad to see you, folks. God bless you. Appreciate you very much. Man, I see a lot of friends here. I got a North Carolina friend right here on the platform. He's a, he's a Tar Heel. Brother Coburn is a great evangelist, great preacher, and he's from North Carolina. Hallelujah. I've known him for a long time, about ever since he's had the Holy Ghost. And it's great to see him. And all these wonderful ministers, I tried to call names. I couldn't remember everybody's name, but please know that I'm, I'm delighted to be here and glad to see you tonight. We need preaching in this hour. We need preaching. Amen. Hell demands it. And earth deserves it. And heaven anoints it. And we need preaching in this hour. We're saved by the word of God. I love this beautiful singing. Great music. Brother Spell. The ladies. And, and Brother Tony Spell and his wife. And all of these musicians. I love singing. I love music. But we're not saved by singing. We're not saved by music. We're saved by the Word of God. How can they hear without a preacher? How can he preach except to be sent? We're saved by the Word. Somebody say amen. I said we're saved by the Word of God. Let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. So let's turn tonight, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and uh, verse number 10. And I'll read one verse tonight in your hearing. That is quite familiar, and many of you could quote it. But I'll read it. Verse number 10. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Now the part of this verse that I've read that is quite familiar is, For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. I want to preach for a while tonight, and my subject may not sound like it's kin to my scriptural text that I read, but I want to preach tonight, and for the sake of a title, the church was there. The church was there. Brother Tony Spell, Pastor, would you come and pray? The anointing of the Holy Ghost, I pray that every yoke will be broken tonight, Lord Jesus. I pray that you take coals, O oh God. Up off the altar and anoint this preacher's lips of clay. Break every yoke, God. Plow up our fallow ground, Lord Jesus. Let your Holy Ghost preach to us tonight. Speak to us, God. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. Amen. Let's let the Holy Ghost move. Preacher. 
preaching. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Thank you for standing so long. You may be seated and God bless you. It was obvious from the scripture that the apostle Paul dearly loved Demas. He was a special young man to the beloved apostle. And uh, when I first read about uh, Demas, I, I read a couple of times about him before my scriptural text. For example, in the little book of Philemon, uh, it's only got one chapter right here before Hebrews, verse 24, the Bible said, Marcus, Aristocrus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers. He names four men, and one of them was Demas. And Paul called him a fellow laborer. So this man was not just a happenstance person that visited a church one night. This man was a part, at least uh, connected to the ministry of the Apostle Paul. Paul called him a fellow laborer. Then when you go back to Colossians chapter 4, Colossians 4 and verse number 14 uh, Paul writes again, Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. So he says Demas again. He didn't just happen to kick around any name or just anybody's name. But he said in Philemon, he calls him a fellow laborer. In uh, Colossians, uh, he just says Demas greet you. So this was a young man that uh, held a place in the heart of the apostle Paul. But now he writes, and I'm sure it's with a much, much sadness and much uh, uh, of a broken heart when he, when he writes my text tonight, for Demas hath forsaken me. How sad would it be? How bad would it be? How horrible would it be for some young man who worked with Bishop Spell, say, for a long time, and he was a fellow helper, he was a fellow laborer, he was perhaps a fellow preacher. He was uh, a dependable person. He was a reliable young man. He was someone you could depend upon. And how sad it would be to have to write, after much writing and after much uh, commendation of this young man, Demas, how sad it would be to have to write, for Demas hath forsaken me. That's a sad thing. Demas is, is a fellow laborer. Demas is a... Is a, is a young man that's been very dependable in the ministry. But now then, I've got to write you. I've got to let you know. I've got to tell you, though it breaks my heart, that Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. Amen. Demas has forsaken me. Now, I don't know what part of the world it was that he loved. Um, I haven't been able to read in the Scripture what the particular sin was that Demas committed of what part of the world he loved. There's, uh, there's a lot of things about this world that people are falling in love with. But I heard a song one time, I don't want to get adjusted to this world. And I don't want to get adjusted to this world. We got a better place than this. I wouldn't take nothing from a journey now. Praise God. They sang it tonight and I remember years ago when I was up and preached in Madisonville, Kentucky for Brother Jimmy Russell. Brother Jimmy Russell told me the story of that song. It wouldn't take nothing from a journey now. He said uh, there was an old gentleman in his church. that Every time they had a testimony service, he'd get up and the only thing he'd say was, Saints, I wouldn't take nothing from a journey now. That's all he'd say. He wouldn't say every time. You could depend on it. Every time. I wouldn't take nothing from a journey now. And, of course, Rusty Goodman and the Goodman family lived there, and they heard about it, and they wrote, and Rusty, I think, wrote the song, and they sang it and made it popular. But it came from the testimony of a dear old precious saint of God that was there every time the door was open. Praise God. And people that stand behind their pastor are valuable people. And people that are loyal to their church are valuable people. People that stand behind the man of God are to be commended for their faithfulness and their commitment to God. Hallelujah. We need more men tonight and women and young people that will stand behind their pastor. And he don't have to explain everything he's doing. You're just standing behind him because you believe and you know in your heart he's God's man. 
And he's your pastor. And he's your shepherd. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Paul didn't say what sin he'd committed. I don't know. I don't know if he drank. I don't know what kind of drugs they had in those days. I don't know if he smoked. I don't know if he cursed. I don't know what he did. I, I'm not sure. I could only uh, surmise. I could only speculate tonight. But he said, Demas has forsaken me, having loved the present world. Having loved this present world. That's the problem. It's this present world. That's what's robbing so many people of victory and power with God tonight is a love for this present world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to get in love with this world. Glory to God. One lady was bragging about her son and she said, he is really, he's really rising up. He's got a good job. And, he, and she began to brag about everything she said by the spell was he's really, he's really getting to be somebody in this world. And finally the old man said, ma'am, don't you think that there's another world that's better than this? I think your son's in love with the wrong world. And I think if your love is focused on this world, you're looking at the wrong things. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there's one thing that I noticed that, that Paul, when he said, Demas has forsaken me, I haven't loved this present world. He did not say he's gone forever. He did not say he can never come back. He did not say he has blasphemed against the Holy Ghost. All right. Now, he just said he's loved this present world. This message tonight is not a, a uh, uh, vindication of evil or holding up for those that have left the church. But I do believe there are folks that have left the church in this hour that are going to come back to our apostolic churches and pray back through. I don't know whether Demas ever came back. But I believe there's some Demases in Baton Rouge. That needs this church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You know what the policy I believe that this church is. Is an open door policy. In the sense that everybody can come. Whosoever will can come. We're going to preach against sin, but we're going to love the sinner. We're going to preach against the love of this present world, but we're going to tell those that are in love with this present world that God can help you, and that God can forgive you, and that God can restore you, and that God can renew you, and that God can refill you. How many believe there's room in the church for a backslider tonight that comes back to God in faith and desire? And repentance. And getting right with God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. So he didn't say he's gone forever. He didn't say there's no chance. He didn't say there's no hope. He didn't say he's cut off forever. He didn't say the man is gone and will never be back. He didn't say that, that, that he'll never ever have another chance to be saved. One thing that he did say, he said he has departed from me and he's, and, and he's departed unto Thessalonica. Now there's one thing about Thessalonica is that they had a good church there. Boy, it makes a difference when you got a good church. Makes a difference when you got an apostolic church. Makes a difference when you got a Jesus name church. Makes a difference when you got a Holy Ghost anointed church. Makes a difference when you got a one God church. Praise God. This is a one God church. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. There is one Lord. There is one faith. There is one baptism. There is one God and Father of all, who's above all, through all, and in you all. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. He said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. How sayest thou then, show us the Father? Thou believest there's one God, thou doest well. The devils also believed and trembled. Jesus said, I'm Alpha. I'm the Omega. I'm the beginning. I'm the 
ending. I'm the first. I'm the last. I'm the one which is, which was, and which is to come. I'm the Almighty. Jesus said, I'm the Almighty. He didn't say, I'm part mighty. He didn't say, I'm somebody. He didn't say, I'm one third of God. He said, I'm the Almighty. The fullness of the Godhead dwells in Jesus Christ. Oh, let's praise Him for that truth tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Now, the thing that I want to point out tonight is, Demas, you're leaving Paul. You're leaving the apostolic ministry. You're leaving a man of God. But if you think you can run away and hide, and you'll never be confronted with this truth again, you may be in for a shock. You may be in for surprise. Because where you go, there's going to be an apostolic church there. Where you're moving to, there's a good church there. And there's a good chance, Demas, that somewhere, somehow, someday, you're going to come face to face with some baptized Holy Ghost filled child of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And somebody one day, Demas, may ask you, have you ever heard of the Holy Ghost? Have you ever heard of what a baptism in Jesus' name? And it's going to strike you like a dagger in your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm saying to the church in Baton Rouge tonight, there are backsliders everywhere in this city. And this church has the message to reach them with. Clap your hands with me and let's praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated. I don't know how many churches are represented here tonight, but if every church that's represented here tonight were to reach the backsliders, just the backsliders, that believe the truth, they believe Jesus' name and one God and the Holy Ghost. They believe the truth. And if they ever go to any church, they're going to come to a truth-preaching church. They got it in them. If every church that's represented here tonight, including ours where I'm pastor, if we could reach all the backsliders in our community, we would have one of the greatest revivals that's ever been known to man. You say they're not coming back. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Let's, let's don't send them to hell tonight. Let's don't assign them to hell tonight. Let's say as long as the church is there, there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. There is hope. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There used to be young men running this church, but throughout the world tonight, they need to be back on these pews. I said they need to be back on these pews. There's people in your community that used to sing and shout in your church. They need to get back in church. They need to be living for God. Hallelujah. It's time for the church to be on fire, full of faith, red hot, full of the Holy Ghost, and reaching every soul we can. Glory. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Robert Kennedy was running for president, 1968, he had a slogan. Some of you remember. He said, some ask why. Others ask why not. But I ask why not now. Amen. So let me bring that into church tonight. Some ask why. Others ask why not. But I ask why not now. We want to see our altars filled. Why not now? We want to see them baptized in Jesus' name. Why not now? The Lord's coming is soon. 
We want to see them filled with the Holy Ghost. Why not now? Why not now? Everybody in this house needs to get a fresh burden and a fresh vision of lost souls that are dying and going to hell without God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, no matter how much we know, somebody said, I don't even know who said it, they said people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. There's a lot of truth in that. They don't, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. But I'm telling you that, uh, Demas, when you go to Thessalonica, you're going to go to a city that's got a good church. I'm going to prove that. Turn with me to 1 Thessalonians 1 and verse number 2. We give thanks to God. 1 Thessalonians 1 and 2. Always for you all make a mention of you in our prayers. Without Remembering without ceasing. Now this is the Thessalonican church. Remember without ceasing. Number one, your work of faith. Your work of faith. Number two, I can elaborate, I want. Your labor of love. And the third thing he commended was your patience of hope. He said there's three outstanding characteristics in your church. Your faith has got some works with it. Your love has got some labor to it. And your hope has got patience mixed with it. Hallelujah. So if this church had faith, if they had love, if they had hope, if they had work, if they had labor, if they had patience, there's a good chance that someday, somewhere in Thessalonica, Demas is going to come face to face with a red hot apostolic. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And he said this in verse 4, Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. For our gospel came not in you in word only, but also in power and the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. As you know what manner of men we were among you for your sakes. Look at verse 6. And you became followers of us and of the Lord. Somebody said, well, I'm not going to follow a pastor. I'm not going to follow a preacher. I'm just following God. In 48 years of pastoring, I've heard a lot of people say, well, I'm just following the Lord. I don't have, I'm not following no man. I'm just, I'm just following God. I'm going to tell you, before you can follow God, you better, you better look up a man of God and start following a man of God in your life. <laughs> Praise God. One, one man came to a friend of mine and, and he was there for the first time, Brother Colbert, and never been to that church. And he said, I'd like to be a part of this choir. He'd heard the choir sing that night. And he said, uh, I'd like to be a part of this choir. And the uh, pastor said, um, where, do you, where do you go to church? Where, where, are you, where do you go to church? Where, where are you a member of the church? And uh, uh, he, he said, well, I don't go to any particular church, but I want to sing in your choir. There's a lot of people that want to do that. There's a lot of folks that want to sing and play music and, and, uh, and, uh, and be involved, but they don't want to be a part of a church when it comes to work and fasting and prayer. Praise God. So he said, Brother Spell, he said, I belong to God's invisible church. He was very proud of himself. I belong to God's invisible church. The pastor said, then I suggest you sing in God's invisible choir. Praise God. If you want to sing in the choir, be faithful. Somebody said, man, I'd like to be a part of this church. I like this guy. I'd like to be a part of this church. Praise God. Get committed and get faithful and get holy and get right with God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Somebody said hallelujah. You may be seated. So here's what Paul said in verse 6. You became followers of us 
and of the Lord. You became followers of us and the Lord. Having received the word in much affliction with joy in the Holy Ghost, so that uh, you were in samples of all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. Verse 8, for from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. I don't need to add any more, Paul said. Hallelujah. I want you to look at this church. They were followers of Paul, and then they were followers of God. Amen. The way I, what I know about God, I've learned through the ministry. Everything I know about the Word of God, I've learned through preaching and teaching and the Word of God. Thank God for His Word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want a revival, but I want a revival that's built on the Word of God. I don't want something that's shallow and cotton candy. I don't want a cotton candy revival. I want a revival that's built on the Word of God. Folks that can't take preaching, they're not going to go very far with God. Praise God. I said, folks that can't take preaching, are not going very far with God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want you to notice in 1 Thessalonians 2 and 13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing because when you receive the word of God, which you heard of us. Notice, which you heard of us. I would say this tonight. Value the man of God in your life. Esteem the man of God in your life. Appreciate the man of God in your life. Stand behind the man of God in your life. I've seen people get crossways with a pastor and didn't want to receive teaching or instruction or training and leave the church, but they never do any good when they walk away from the truth that a man of God is preaching. Hallelujah. So he said, uh, you received it not as the word of men, but as in truth, as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. He said, when you heard us, you didn't just say, well, that's Paul talking. You took that as God's word. You receive that as the word of God. You receive that, that this is something that is precious. This is something that's important. This is God's word. And you, you, had, the, uh, uh, you had the judgment to receive the word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 15 says, For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have you not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you be your followers of me. At least seven times in the New Testament, Paul said, I want you to follow me. Hallelujah. There's got to be the following of a man of God. There's got to be the ability to latch into the vision and burden of this man right here. Praise God, the man that God puts in as the pastor and the shepherd. There's got to be a tapping in to his vision and his burden. Praise God. And so Paul said, I, this church in Thessalonica is a good church. They've got works of faith and they've got labor of love and they've got patience and hope. When you get there, Demas, you can't hide from it. I'm going to tell you, I don't care where you go, somebody will be there. Somebody will be there to remind you of the truth. Several years ago, I went to Germany to preach in Kaiserslautern, West Germany, K-Town they call it. And they rented the auditorium downtown, had a European conference. And there was people there from several different countries of Europe. And uh, I was preaching through interpreters, many, many interpreters. And so uh, one night this young man, in fact, about the second night I was there, a young man came up to me, shook my hand. He said, do you remember me? And I said, no, I don't think I know you. He said, does the name Lassure uh, ring a bell with you? I said, oh, yes, yeah. Sister Lassure lived uh, second house down from church where my dad pastored 43 years in Missouri. He said, uh, yeah, I know. And he told me his first name. I said, yeah, I remember you. He said, you know, that was my grandmother, Sister Lassure. I said, yeah. He said, she bugged me so much. I lived with her and said, she bugged me so much about coming to that church. I said, I'm going to join the military and get away from this church. I don't want nothing to do with Pentecost. I don't want nothing to do with Pentecost. So he said, I joined the military. And uh, he said, I came to Germany. And he said, uh, 
the, the first day I was here, he said I was moving into whatever they call it on base. And he said, uh, one, of the, one of the fellow soldiers said to me, said, hey, have you found your church yet? First day I was here. Said, he said, have you found your church yet? He said, no, I hadn't. And he said, I thought, man, don't bug me with church. I've heard all that I want. And he said, I just asked him, where do you go to church? Oh, he said, we got a Pentecostal church on base here. I'll tell you about our church. <laughs> praise God, praise God, praise God. He said, Brother Godin, the first day I was here, I came face to face with what I was running away from in Missouri. He said, I want to tell you that I've been baptized in Jesus' name. I got the Holy Ghost. I'm living for God. I'm in church now. Turn that just a little bit this way. My throat's back. Praise God. Somebody shout amen. amen. Praise God. I said the church was there. That's what I'm talking about tonight. The church is there. If you go to Natchez, Mississippi, try to run away from God. Brother Jim Johnson's going to be there. The church is there. The church is there. The church is there. If you go to Pineville, the church is going to be there. I can start naming towns. You can say, I'll run away from Brother Tony Spell. I'll run away from this church. I want to tell you, friend, you can't run from God. God knows your name and address. God knows who you are. Praise God, praise God. Somebody may have moved to Baton Rouge and thought, well, I don't want to be Pentecostal. I don't want to live for God. I'll go to Baton Rouge. That's capital city. That's got LSU University there. And I'll get lost in the crowd. But somewhere in that crowd, somewhere in that crowd, somebody's going to come face to face with you and say, have you ever heard of Pentecost? Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. I got a message for you, Demas. When you get to Thessalonica, the church is going to be there. The church is going to be there. The church is going to be there. They're going to talk to you. They're going to pray for you. They're going to love you. You can't run away from it. You can't hide. Hallelujah. Now then the question is this. You may be seated. When folks come to our churches, do they find the church the way it's always been? Or do they find a different church? When folks that go away from Pentecost and they come back in another town or city or church or even back to the same church, the question is, what will they find when they get back? Will they find a cold church? Will they find a prayerless church? Will they find a powerless church? Will they find a worldly church? Will they find a church that don't care about souls? Will they find a church that's just functionary? Hallelujah! I pray that when they come back to every one of our churches, they'll find the same thing that they left. The same church, the same doctrine, the same holiness, the same everything. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I overheard somebody talking in our church here a while back, it wasn't too long ago, I was walking down the aisle and I overheard somebody ask another lady the question, who do you think is the best dressed lady in this church? And I don't respond to everything. At 48 years, I don't respond to everything I hear. But I responded to that when I turned around and I said, what did you say? She said, I just asked her, who's the best dressed lady in the church? I said, what difference does it make? This is not a fashion show. Praise God. 
I said this is not a fashion show. We're apostolic. We're Pentecostal. We're Jesus' name. We're Holy Ghost filled. We believe in living holy and godly. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 You can be seated if you like to. I believe when folks go to church, they ought to, they don't look like they're going to church, but with some people that varies. And I'm talking about if you're a Christian living holy, godly, that's, that's just a foregone conclusion. You're going to dress holy and dress godly and dress right and all that. That's, and, uh, and if you're brand new in the church, it may take you time to come to that, but I'm going to tell you, the way of God's a way of holiness. Hallelujah. I said it's a way of holiness. Glory to God. Glory to God. I believe you ought to brush your teeth before you go to church. I believe you ought to comb your hair before you go to church. I don't think it's a bad idea to take a bath every now and then. Praise God. I don't think there's a thing wrong with wearing the best you got to church. Let me say this. If you're going to wear the best you got to a funeral, why not wear the best you got to church? This is better than a funeral. There's life here tonight. Somebody shout hallelujah. So you may be seen. There's nothing wrong with wearing the best you got. I don't believe we ought to get caught up in this postmodern church world. Go to church with our baggy jeans. And uh, unbutton our shirt button two or three buttons down. Wear baggy britches and wear... There's preachers preaching in my town that go to the pulpit with shoes on but no socks. I'm good mind to call them and say, if you don't have money, buy a pair of socks. I'll buy you a pair of socks. Yeah, yeah I'll send you an offering. Hallelujah. That ain't the only thing I'd like to send them. <laughs> Glory to God. But I'm saying this is not a fashion show. The church should never be viewed... Who's the best dressed man? Who's the best dressed lady? Do the best you can, but let's have church. Maybe seated. If your clothes is too good for you to shout in, they're too good. If they're too pretty for you to dance in, they're too pretty. They're too nice for you to run the aisles in, they're too nice. Praise God. Praise God. Do the best you can, but let's be Pentecostal. That's singing, that's shouting, that's dancing, that's tongue talking, that's having church. Hoy. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. I believe if folks have a little means, this world, when they come into our church, they ought to feel comfortable. I believe when the, when the poorest person in town comes into our church, they ought to feel comfortable. One man told me one time, neighboring pastor, he said, years ago, he said, I, don't want, I want doctors and lawyers and skilled and professional business people. And uh, he said, I don't want poor folks. I said, send them over to me. I said, I'll take them. That man's not even pastor there anymore. He's gone. He's not even around there anymore. In fact, he's not even pastoring anymore. His spirit was wrong. Praise God. If somebody walks in your door and don't have the finest of clothes and you thumb your nose at them, you need to pray through. Praise God. Praise God. This is not a social club. It's the church. It's the body of Christ. It's the ecclesia. It's the called out ones. Hallelujah. 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 But when they get to that church, when if, if Demas, I'm not saying he did. I'm just saying it's, it's possible he could have. The possibility existed 
that Demas could have gotten back in church. That possibility existed. Because I've seen people that love this present world. We had a young man to pray through. Well, he's in his, his early 40s. That's pretty young and more. But, um, he, he prayed through in our revival. He'd been gone 15 years. 15 years we just had a revival. He was gone. And he stood up and testified. One night he prayed back through and got the Holy Ghost. He came in with a beard. The next night he came in clean shaven. And he started crying. He said, Pastor Goldberg said, I want to tell you. He said, I hadn't been in this church in 15 years. But he said, you know what impacted me when I came back here last week? He said, this is the same church I left 15 years ago. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And if you're a new convert, you let your pastor teach you or whoever he designates to teach you. But I'm telling you that in our church that we pastor, I'm not bragging. We have not half enough. But you're not used for anything in our church, lady, if you cut your hair. Nothing. You're not used in our church if you cut your hair. Even trim it. How long is long? I'll tell you how long it is. As long as it'll grow. And if you cut it any, you shorten it. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. We don't use people in any capacity. Ladies that wear makeup. We don't use people that wear jewelry. Praise God. Praise God. We don't use women that wear pants. Or men that wear dresses. Brother Cox, you still believe it? Oh, praise God. You better keep believing it, man. If you let me down, I'm telling you, I'll be in trouble. But you know what? We don't use people, ladies, that wear pants. You don't wear them on the job. You don't wear them on vacation. You don't wear them anywhere. When you come to God, it's time to clean house. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 We don't use anybody in our church. I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm going to talk about us. You've been there. You've been there and you've been there. But you, we don't use anybody in our church that has TV in the home. Praise God. Praise God. We don't use anybody that watches Hollywood movies of any type, nature, or. <laughs> Praise God. Let me tell you what. Every sinner is welcome. Every backslider is welcome. But when it comes to people that use, they need to live right. Walk right. Dress right. God's word has not changed. You may say, well, brother, go there. A lot of churches around me are changing. Yes, I think we all have that same testimony. A lot of churches are changing. Hallelujah. But why don't we decide we're going to be that true apostolic church that doesn't change? <laughs> Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. I made up my mind, Brother Spell, that no matter how many I have to preach to or how few, I'm going to preach the Word of God. I'm going to try to do it with the right spirit, but I'm not going to cut any corners. One man came to me one time. He said, Pastor Go die, baptize me, got the Holy Ghost business, man. He said, if you'll cut, if you'll cut a corner in one place for me, I'll keep coming to church and I'll support you and I'll back you. I said, what are you talking about, Dick? His first name was Dick. I said, what are you talking about? 
He said, television. He said, if you'll just not preach against television, he said, I will back you all the way. I'll support you with everything I got. And I said, sir, I couldn't do that for you or anybody in the world. I said, you know what? God called me to preach. Hey, Demas, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not of the Father, it's of the world. Now, Demas, if you're ever saved, you've got to get the love of the world out of your heart. But there's a church there where it can happen. Praise God. I tell our folks at home, God never called me to fill this building. He called me to fill the pulpit. I'm not trying, I'm, I'm not trying to please everybody. God didn't call me just to fill a building. He called me to fill this pulpit and preach the word. You said it a while ago. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Praise God. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Hallelujah. Now I'm I'm filling the pulpit. I'm going to try to do everything I can to reach every soul I can. I'm going to try to reach out as far as I can to everybody that I can. Hallelujah. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to reach every soul I can. Brother Spell, you was there a couple of three months ago. Hey, Amen. I don't think you've got to cut corners. I don't think you've got to compromise to have a church. If the devil is telling some of you preachers that are here tonight you've got to let down and compromise and give in on certain vital areas in order to have a church, you tell the devil he's a liar. And the kind of church you're going to have when you compromise, you may not even want to pastor your own church. I had a man tell me one time, he said, I built a church that I cannot pastor because of what I allowed to come in. He said, I still believe it in my heart, but he said, I built a church that I can no longer pastor, and he no longer pastors there. Hallelujah. 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 I love your Sunday school classroom. Brother Spell showed me through your building. I love your bus ministry. I love your outreach and evangelism. We've done that for years, and I'm going to keep on doing it as long as we can. Hallelujah. We had 400, 403 on our buses last Sunday. Every week we're going to run buses, 20 buses, 14 vans. We're going to run them throughout the city. Amen. Folks can say, well, that's just crazy. One preacher told me, he said, if they don't have a job and they don't have a car and they don't have a phone, I don't want them in my church. Apostolic preacher. Hallelujah. I don't believe that God honors laziness. We prayed folks through that didn't have a job, and they got a job. We prayed folks through that didn't have a car. They started paying their tithes and being faithful to church, and God gave them a car. A couple came to me with a spell Sunday night. A couple came to me and said, we've been needing a car. They've been coming to church every service, paying their tithes, being faithful. They said we couldn't afford it. They said this past week, two different people gave us a car. Now I've got two cars. And I said, and uh, I smiled a little and I said, but the question is, do they run? He said, Brother Goodhead, they are both fine automobiles. They both run just in perfect shape. And in one week's time, God, we've been making that a matter of prayer, and God gave us two cars. I'm telling you, I don't care. I don't care who you are. There's a place in the apostolic church for you. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to rush to a close. What about the prodigal son? When he went away from home, he spent everything he had in sinful and riotous living. 
he wound up in the hog pen and would fain or gladly have filled his belly with a husk with a swine to eat. But he came to himself. I believe there's some people in Baton Rouge and in your community that's going to come to themselves. <laughs> I claim it tonight. I'm not prophesying. I just claim in Jesus' name that some of these people that already believe, you don't have to teach them Jesus' name, baptism, they believe it. You don't have to teach them the Holy Ghost, they believe it. You don't have to teach them one God, they believe it. You don't have to teach them holy living, they believe it. Praise God. If they can just come back to God, and I believe God's going to help us to reach them in the end time. I feel impacted tonight in the Holy Ghost to tell you, let's open our doors to every Demas that comes our way. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hey, the prodigal son said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to rise and go back to my father's house. And I'm going to say, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you, and I'm no worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your hired servants. Hallelujah. And he started back to his father's house. And the father prepared a feast for him. But I heard somebody say, and I don't know who it was, I heard somebody say, I'm glad that the prodigal son met his father before he met his brother. In some cases, probably in every case, but in certainly in a lot of cases, that prodigal son's a whole lot better off to meet the father first. Because that brother may not be right. That brother may not have a right spirit. I've, I've seen folks that, that didn't want the church to grow. I pastored, started a church in Malden, Missouri in 1962. First church I ever pastored. How long has that been? 48 years? First church we ever sta started in Malden, Missouri, in a storefront. I mean, no air conditioning at all. No heat at all. A little storefront with the windows built into the building. I preached when they, it was 120 degrees in there. A sinner person came to me and said, you're so red in the face, you're going to die. You, you, you keep preaching like that, you're going to die. Well, it's been 48 years, and I'm still preaching. I don't know where they are, but anyhow. We didn't have air conditioning. We didn't have, we, it was an old concrete floor, just painted red. The pews were horrible. Didn't have a bathroom within eight blocks. That was at the Shell Station. <laughs> Praise God. And they closed at 8 o'clock, Brother Spell. Boy, after 8 o'clock, I preached to a captive audience. There wasn't nowhere to go. You couldn't go get a drink of water. There wasn't no water to get. You couldn't go to the bathroom. There wasn't no bathroom. So, boy, I preached to a captive audience after 8 o'clock. Nobody's moving. Everybody's listening. But you know what? In that little old building, we started having church. And a man and his wife and, and five uh, children, five children walked in one Sunday. And they sat on the seat and they came to the altar and just prayed a little. I could tell they didn't know much about prayer and God. And I talked to them after church and I said, who invited you to church? They said, no one. I said, I'm interested in knowing how'd you get here? Oh, he said, it's an interesting story. But we tried to join the First Baptist Church downtown. I wasn't going to call their name, but I already did. I'm not going to take it back. But he said, uh, we tried to join the First Baptist Church downtown last Sunday and said they told us, said you wouldn't feel comfortable in our building. These were very common, ordinary folk. And that church was a sort of uptown church. They said we got a mission on Kimball Street. We recommend next Sunday that you go to the mission church. You'll feel more at home there. They wouldn't let us come to that building. He said, so we were brokenhearted, my wife, and she was standing there. And he said, my kids... And we started to go to Kimball Street. And they were right around the corner from us. You could see them from our building. He said, we started to go there today. Okay, we'll go. We'll go to their mission. And he said, we started to pass by this little storefront, center block storefront. And he said something. I don't know what it was. He said, told me, just pull in here. He said, we came in here. Three weeks later, the man and his wife were baptized in Jesus' name and had the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. <laughs> Praise God. He came to me with a spell. And he said, Pastor, go there. Would it be all right if I'd write a letter? I said, what kind of letter are you going to write? He said to the pastor of that first church. I said, what are you going to say? He said, nothing, just thank you letter. I said, I said, what are you going to thank him for? He said, 
I, I'm going to say it nice. I said, be nice, be sweet. And so he said, I'm going to write a letter. And he did the next week. And he said, dear pastor so-and-so, we was at your church a son, few Sundays ago, and you said we couldn't come to your church. And I'm so glad you told us that. Because if you'd have accepted us, we wouldn't have the Holy Ghost. But he said, you told us. And God sent us to a Pentecostal church. And now we're baptized. And now we got the Holy Ghost. And now we're living for God. Praise God, praise God. You can't stop the church. You can't stop the church. Hey, Demas, you may leave it, but the church is going on. The church is going on. You may find God in Thessalonica, but the church is going on. The church is going forward. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Be seated for just a moment. Precious lady that I knew, a dear black lady baptized and had the Holy Ghost. She used to go in Missouri to a little country church. And they sang and they shouted and they talked in tongues. And they'd run the aisles like you folks do. I like we having church here tonight. And her husband said, we've lost a job and I have no job. We're moving the city. And they moved to St. Louis. And uh, he got up there and she went to Pentecost church. But the first night she was there, she jumped up and started shouting. And the usher came to her and said, we don't do that in this church. She said, what? No, we don't do that here. She said in a few moments they started singing the song and I was overwhelmed with joy and I jumped up and started shouting. The usher got me up the arm led me out and said, we can't do that here. Hallelujah. So she kind of went up on a hill a little bit there, looked back down at that little church and, and she was praying. This is what she said. She said, God, there sets the building. But here goes the church. <laughs> Praise God. I'm glad you got a nice building. But it's not too nice to shout in. It's not too nice to dance in. It's not too nice to run the aisles in. It's not too nice to talk in tongues. In. Praise God. Somebody praise God with me right now. Somebody praise God with me right now. Let's all remain standing. Let's everybody stand, please. When backsliders come back to our church, let's let them find a church that still baptizes in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. We still believe in the Holy Ghost speaking with tongues. We still believe you must be born again of water and spirit. We still believe there's one God. We still believe in commitment, holiness, faithfulness, loving truth. When the backslider comes back to our church, may they find a true apostolic church. Let's raise our hands and praise the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't we all just pray a moment here? Demas, you forsook Paul, but you're going to Thessalonica. There's a church there that has faith. They have love. They have patience. They've got works. They've got labor. They've got everything it takes. Demas, you can't hide from the truth. You can't run away from this message. Brother Jim Johnson's here and uh, also Brother Coburn, North Carolina. Brother Johnson used to be our assistant. Great, great, great man of God that I love and appreciate so much. And uh, they'll both know that in Lumberton, North Carolina, there's a church there. 
And uh, there was a, the pastor was in a building program several years ago. And he kept dealing with a lady who was a banker. And he kept going in trying to work out the particulars of a loan. She had earrings, makeup, cut hair, pants. Typical person that you'd see in the world. Finally, after about five or six trips in there, the, the pastor told me that she looked at him one day and she said, Reverend, we're going to give you that loan. But she got up and she shut the door to her office. She said, but I got something else I want to say today. He said, what's that? This is the bank president. She said, what you don't know is I was raised just like you are. She said, I was raised in New Brunswick. My dad and mother went to an apostolic Pentecostal church. They preach like you. My mother looked like your wife in dress and attire and so on. She said, I was stubborn. I was rebellious. I wouldn't get in. I wouldn't get right. I wanted the world. I wanted to make my mark in the world. And she said, I left home. I went to college. I got into banking. And she said, I'm married now. But she said, with tears flowing down her cheeks, she said, Reverend, more than just a loan, God sent you in here. Because I'm running from the very thing that you folks have. I preached there a few weeks later and her and her husband were sitting right back on my left about halfway back and they were both baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Praise God! Let me tell you, friend, the church is powerful. The church has spiritual authority. The church is dynamic. The church is wonderful. The church is beautiful. Don't ever leave the church. This is the greatest thing on the face of this earth. Don't ever, ever, ever leave the church. Let me read in closing. Let me read to you what a man that was raised up in an apostolic Pentecostal church wrote. He wrote to a religious magazine. He still goes to a charismatic church. Let me read it to you and see if you can identify with any of this. I'm reading word for word. When the Holy Ghost is present and power and spiritual hunger, and spiritual hunger rises, healing and joy are released. The flame inside of his fanned into a blaze and our dying embers come alive. But when I look around to churches today, even among congregations that used to be Pentecostal, have the Pentecostal label, it appears that Pentecost has become a stale concept. Many churches have intentionally turned their thermostats way down below room temperature in an effort to be relevant and sophisticated. This man was raised in a Jesus name, one God of God, church, now he's charismatic. But in his moment, for the spell of realizing where the real thing was, he wrote this. He said, we wanted to fit in with the culture so badly that we moved uptown reinvented our message, remodeled our altars. I'm all for us making changes to reach a new audience, but I fear that the, I fear that the fire on our altars went out while we were at the bowling alley in the ball game. He said, we've invented a new variety of dry religion. Today's version includes upbeat music, a casual dress code, relaxed meeting times, and popcorn sermons. We even use PowerPoint movie clips. We're proud to say, Hey, we're not that religious. This is an ex-apostolic. But let's remember that we aren't open to the Holy Ghost if we aren't willing to take the risk involved in Pentecost. Then our trendy postmodern worship experience can become as boring as a three-hour pipe organ concert. Then he said this, and I believe he must have been reminiscing, maybe even crying when he wrote it. He said, does anybody out there notice that something is missing? Look around at our churches. Is the Holy Ghost welcome? How long has it been since someone gave a prophecy or message in tongues in the service? Do sick people come to our altar for healing? How long has it been since someone was overcome by conviction that they ran to the front seeking God? As things are, reg are things so regimented that God can't interrupt our programs, it's time to look beyond our slick facades and recover what's been misplaced before we lose a generation. We're in the same predicament 
as the sons of the prophets who turned to Elisha for help, Second King 6. They were busy building the house when one of the men dropped his axe head in the Jordan River. He had lost his most valuable tool, and he couldn't build anything without it. The man cried for help, and Elisha supernaturally discerned where the axe was submerged. Then Elisha caused the heavy iron tool to float to the surface of the water. In all of our religious busyness, we must recognize that we've lost the axe head. We're trying to build ministries without the one tool that can do the job. Maybe we thought we could use a cheaper substitute, but our lightweight imitations are not working. We may dress and perform like hip, tech-savvy 21st century Christians, but we don't have the power of Pentecost. We become dull and helpless. We must return to the Jordan, the place where the Holy Ghost descended on Jesus, cry out to God for his power to be restored. We must have the spirit sharp edge. Only he can cut through sinful hearts and blaze, spark the blaze that will engulf our nation in authentic spiritual revival. And he asked the question when he closed his article, do we really want it? Do we really want it? Do we really want it? I'm standing here tonight and my soul is hungry. My soul is hungry for a authentic Pentecost, real, genuine, first century apostolic Pentecost. I don't want a watered down Pentecost. I want a, I want a genuine, authentic Pentecost. A man in Illinois told me a while back, he said, he's a preacher. Some of you would know him if I called his name. He said, my son backslid, went away from church, and he said, I don't want church anymore. I want long hair. I want to so I want to do this. I want to do that. I don't want the church anymore. He said, so he joined the military. I'm telling you a true story tonight. And he said, the first place he went was to 29 Palms, California, out in the desert. And he said, the second, first or second day he was there, first or second day he was there, he said, somebody came to me and said, what's your name? And he told him, he said, have you ever been to a Pentecostal church? This young man said it then and only then did I realize that I couldn't run from God. And we were in a mission service in Jacksonville, North Carolina. And Brother James Gilbert was pastor at that time. And this young man was there then. He stood up and said, I'm the man. He said, I found out you can't run from God. I found out that no matter where you go, God will get you. I'm talking to some people tonight in closing. Demas has forsaken me, having loved the present world. But Demas, you departed to Thessalonica. Don't ever forget it, buddy. There's a church there. There's a church there. There's a church there. Your hidden glory in creation Now revealed in you our Christ What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is You sing The name of Jesus Christ my
Books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. When they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, each of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. 